In this video we're going to solve some logic gate and truth table questions that we've seen in some past papers. So to start with I'm just going to show you this diagram. This is a representation of the most common logic gates okay, and their associated truth tables. So you know we can look at the yes truth table up here. Um, you know it's not something that we're really too interested in because as you can see if we put in a zero it comes out a zero and put in a one it comes out a one. So nothing really happens with the yes truth table that interests us. So the most basic one after that is the not table which is here. Um, and the not table is just reverses the input. So if we put a zero coming in here as your input A, then what's going to come out as the output? It's going to be a one. So it reverses it. And likewise, if we put in a one, a zero is going to come out. So it's very straightforward. Then you've got the next two common ones, which are and and or. An and gate looks like this. There's the symbol. The or gate looks like this. And then the and gate. It, it has two inputs and one output. Now for this output to be a one, then the inputs A and B have to be one. Okay, so A and B have to be one, which are these two inputs, to get you a positive output, or a one or a true. So you can see here, according to the truth table, if I put in as my two inputs zero and zero, well obviously they're not both one, so it's gonna be a zero. One and zero, still not gonna be both. Zero and one, still no good and finally when they are both a and b1 then we get a one okay so that's where the, the and comes from that a and b have to be one to produce a one the or gate slightly more complicated but not too difficult in an or gate a or b have to be one to produce a one so again we start off a zero and a zero produces a zero here a or b is positive or is true or is a one so therefore it outputs a one again one of them is a one so there you go and here both of them are one so a or b are one so it's still true so you get a one you've got these four other gates here that we can talk about in a while but we've got xr gate here okay so it's the same as the r gate you'll notice except it has this extra line here and that's called an exclusive r gate and you'll see that the difference here is that it acts like an OR gate, except exclusively one of the inputs has to be on or true. So if both inputs are true, it actually will produce a zero. So you can see the only change is in this scenario here, where there, both inputs are one, it produces a zero. So for this to produce a one, it has to be exclusively that only one of them has a one. You've also got NAND gate here in the bottom left corner and if you look it's the complete opposite of the AND gate so it's the negative AND um, so a zero zero produces a one so in other words the only time it produces a zero is when they are both one the NOR gate is the reverse of the OR so zero one 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 becomes one zero 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 and then you've got the exclusive NOR okay so we'll talk about the exclusive NOR at another time. So when we examine this question here, okay, we've combined a NOT gate and an AND gate, okay, and we're being asked to complete the truth table below from the logic diagram shown. The first row has already been completed. Now, for us to figure out our end output here, which is P, well, obviously P is coming out of an AND gate, okay, so I'll just mark that in, and this AND gate depends on these two inputs that I'm just marking here. Now you can see that the bottom input is B, so we know what that is, okay? So we can predict what's gonna come in from B. But this top input here is reliant on what Q is. Now we don't know what this Q is. Q itself is the result of A going through this NOT gate. So before we can work out P, we need to work out what Q is. So how does the NOT gate behave? Well, let's just erase that. The NOT gate behaves by reversing whatever goes through. So if you look at our truth table, we've got the possible combinations of A and B. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. That's the four possible combinations that A and B can be. Now, if A is a 0 to begin with, so if we just look at both these columns, if A is a 0 and it goes through the NOT gate here, then what's Q going to be at the other side? Well, it's going to be a one. So it just reverses whatever A is. So again, if A is a zero, it goes through the NOT gate, it's going to produce a one. 
if A is 1, it's going to go through the NOT gate and produce a 0. And if A is 1, it goes through the NOT gate and produces a 0. So what you end up with is that pattern um, in the Q area. Okay, so Q is 1, 1, 0, 0. Now we know what is coming through from Q. Okay, so now we're able to figure out what P is. So just to like make it clear, that's Q going in there and that's B. So if these two are going into the AND gate, we are now concerned with just these two columns. And remember, an AND gate only produces a one or a true if both its inputs are a one or true. So in this case here, we've only got one one, so it's gonna produce a zero that you can see already marked. In this case, they are both one, which activates the AND gate to produce a one. They are both zero, so the AND gate has no interest in that, it produces a zero. And one of them is a one and the other is a zero, so the AND gate produces a zero. And that's it, that is the solution to that question. P would produce a zero, one, zero, zero, given those two inputs of A and B, um, as you can see there. A more complicated example from the 2020 Leave Insert Computer Science exam. You can see that we're given a half adder logic circuit below with two outputs S and C from two inputs A and B. So again, the first thing I'm going to do is just identify the gates. So this is an OR gate, it's an AND gate, another AND gate, and a third AND gate, and these are NOT gates. Um, I'm just going to identify B maybe with a little light marker just so that we can tell where B is going. So you can see B is coming down here and a copy of it is going over there. And these little lines can get a little bit confusing, but you can see a copy of it is going there. And finally, a third copy of the B is going this way. And if I switch over and mark in the A's, you can see a copy of the A is going in there. A copy is going in here. And finally, a third copy of the A is going in here. So that makes life a little bit easier. So you can see the first question there beneath the diagram is what is the value of C when inputs A and B are both zero? So if you follow the lines from A and B over and assume that they are both zero, that's a zero and a zero going into that AND gate. And you might remember that an AND gate only produces a one if both inputs A and B are one. In this case, neither of them are one, they're both zero. So at C, a zero is going to be produced. So quite simply, the answer to that question is a zero. The second part of the question just below that is what is the value of S when the inputs A and B are both one? Now this is a more complicated question by far. So again, we'll just use our diagram to trace this out. So A and B are both one. If we follow the green lines for A, remember we're kind of dealing with below this line right now. So we're, we're down in here. Uh, we're not concerned with the top of the diagram anymore because it doesn't really play into uh, our circuit that we're focused on. So if we assume A is a 1, we follow the green line over it, that is going to be a 1 there. Now the B is also going to be a 1, which is coming into this NOT gate, so that's going to be a, a 1. Now the NOT gate is going to turn that 1 into a 0, so out the other end here, on that cable on that wire we will have a zero produced and that means that this AND gate here is taken in as its input a one and a zero now again the AND put will only produce a one if both its inputs are one which means that this AND gate is producing a zero if we look just below at the circuit below that the original a is coming in here along this wire and remember the a is one and the B is also one and it's coming in along this wire. And so we'll just mark one there. Now the A is going through this NOT gate here, which means that it's going to produce a zero, but the B is just going to continue on as a one and enter the AND gate as a one. This AND gate now is taking in a zero and a one. And again, it will produce a zero because both inputs are not one. And finally, we have this R gate over here and its inputs are zero and zero, as you can already see that have been marked. Now the R gate produces a one only if one or both of its inputs are one. In this case, both inputs are zero, 
So the OR gate is going to produce a zero at S. So the answer to the second part of the question is also zero.